Tommy Doherty. Brownlee and Donaghy back to the side that beat Wales, and two men who came on as substitutes start the game today. Lou Macari of Celtic and Asa Hartford of West Bromwich Albion. Tony Green is left out. And Asa Hartford, of course, who really was a tremendous success against Wales, the number 11, with so much positive running, transformed the game on the Scottish side. England, meanwhile, field the side. It's a rather cautious-looking side, a lot of people say, and a negative side. Announced by Alf Ramsey at lunchtime today, the side that started their second leg match against West Germany in Berlin. It's the old guard, if you like, back in action again. That powerful back four of Mabley, McFarlane, Moore and Hughes that really will take some beating this afternoon. And back again to add such competitive bite is Alan Ball of Arsenal. Wanting Macari to come a little closer and then throws a good long one. McFarlane jumping for it, beating everybody in the air and that included uh, Hartford and his own teammate Norman Hunter. Brownlee crossing another one into the England penalty area. Banks! Very nearly let that one go. And he's taking a fair bit of buffeting there from Macquarie and Law. But Banks, if anything, took that just a little casually. And that might have been a terrible mistake. Hunter towards Chivers. But under pressure from McNeil, he can only nod it to Lorimer. Macari getting underneath this one, and McFarlane keeping tight, and now Archie Gemmell again, cross there towards Law! And a goal kick to England. And all signs is the referee, and Rodney Marsh was uh, mimicking a fair number of them himself just then. Billy Bremner. Macari. Through to Lorimer, oh, and Banks stopped him with his feet, and Lorimer tried again, and it's gone over for the corner. And it's a you see now the pickle there that they got themselves into. Lorimer was completely through. Banks gets it, but puts it up in the air, and there's still a chance until he quickly Here's the acts corner. away. Hartford, and kicked away by Story. Scotland. Donachy. Story. Off the knees of Donachy. Colin Bell. Chivers. At the moment, an, an unenviable afternoon for Chivers. So much of it coming in the air to him, and he's been so tightly marked by McNeil, who himself is so good in the air. Alan Ball. Swept wide, but straight to Brownlee. Forward to Lorimer. Law. Gemmell. Scotland looking much more together at the moment than England are. Donaghy. Bremner. Now, in all honesty, if the referee is going to be consistent, he's got to show him the card as well. And Lorimer. Law flicking it there for Hartford. A nice little flick by Hartford to Lorimer. And stopped the well by Colin Bell. And now it's with Ball. Bell. Maidley's gone steaming down the right for him. That's the ball for Paul Maidley, but he'll be lucky to get to it. Flick back for Colin Bell again. Hit first time. And really no more than a yard and a half wide. From Colin Bell. Hunter, Bremner. Ooh, he only put that as far as Ball, and now Chivers back to Alan Ball again. Bell wanting it short and getting it. Chivers right through there, Ball! And it's over the line, and a goal to England! Alan Ball is the man who scored it! Well, here we see it now. It was a delicate little ball when it was laid off there. First time, and he sneaked through. There could be a question of offside there. It was a first-time ball played, but it was suspiciously like offside. It must have been very tight. But it's a goal, it's given, and England are one up. And there's the man who scored it. So Alan Ball, who's been cautioned already in the game, sneaking in there to put...
put England that decisive early goal ahead. Still a few scything tackles going on out there, which uh, do no credit to anybody. Chivers now. Pass more curve, and can he get past McNeil? A lot of English support now. Three against three. And there's the ball through for Bell, and he's onside. Oh, and he hit the post. That was a beautiful ball through for Colin Bell. Got at least one goal in the wind of their backs. And that's the whistle for half time in this home international match at Hampton Park. With the only goal of the first half coming from Alan Ball for England. Which Chivers will take. Bell and Marsh are in the six yard area. And Bell getting in with his head. Hunter turning it back again. And that must have been behind when Bobby Clark hit it. Or rather when it hit Clark because the goal kicked him. And Donerkey now for Scott. Second half goal, and still England leading by a goal to nil. Makari to Johnston, two Celtic players there. Running inside Edmund Hughes, and then allowing Hunter to come in and find Alan Ball. And Chivers. Donaghy with it. Farland in the air. Hartford trying to get a 1-2 going in that England penalty area. Brownlee. Donaghy. First time there towards Asa Hartford. Not it on for Dennis Moore. And a marvellous piece of defence there by McFarland. Macari over his head. corner for which Roy McFarland has gone up again Marsh getting in there with his head but knocking it the wrong way Brownlee to Lorimer and Scotland coming away the blue shirt streaking forward again played for Law Lorimer and Bremner on the far side mainly timing that interception well McNeil Donaghy and mainly cutting that one out. And really the chance of getting to Macari, and now it's with Ball. Chivers. Marsh completely unmarked over on the left, and Bell has spotted him. What a good ball. Played almost without looking by Colin Bell to Marsh. And now for Colin Bell to line one up. And it's saved by uh, Clark. And it looked for us the moment as though it might go through. He's a left-handed goalkeeper, and that ball was hit hard low to his right hand. There it is. He was half going the wrong way, and a fine save there from Clark to keep it out. Scotland with another substitute, Tony Green.
its corner. And Clark getting it well. making a run, and Chivers with a head just wide! Jumping up and down Martin Chivers, the number nine on the far side, in frustration and maybe a little anger that he felt that that was going in. A good cross there towards the near post, the famous old near post cross, and Chivers no more than a couple of inches wide of the post. Bell. The referee saying that Bell was calling for the ball, which proves that he must be English, kick to uh, Scotland. Lorimer the nod on. McFarlane the nod away. Bremner. Makari to Lorimer. Deep in that English half again, and this time Bobby Moore on his chest. And finding Evelyn Hughes, who'll want to plant a long one clear. Round his head up. And that's ball for McDonald. Making up his mind and then firing wide. To have a go, he looked across to see Chivers, and Chivers, in fact, was uh, shadowed by McNeil. And we're well into injury time now. Clark with the kick for Scotland. Tony Green, Hunter, and the final whistle has gone, and Scotland have been denied the championship outright. They get a share of it with England, and perhaps with Ireland tonight, if Ireland can beat Wales in Wrexham, the only goal of the game. Coming from Alan Ball in the first half, and a scrambled goal it was. England with so much space to make chances count in the second half, but really they didn't. And one or two casual moments in defence very nearly cost him the game. But Marlon making one great defensive save, Hughes pressing one off the line, and a marvellous save, some other save as well by Gordon Banks. So Alf delighted with his team, I've no doubt, because they fought well and they played well. So we have a final scoreline at uh, Hampton Park. So Alf lasted almost. Between Scotland nil, England 